functions with double angles have identities that are derived using this identity here. So first of all, I will derive this identity. It's not a double angle identity, we just have A in it. Well, in previous videos, I discussed the unit circle. That's a circle of radius 1. And uh, the unit circle is centered at the origin of the xy plane. And I explained that in the first quadrant, the coordinates of any point are given by cos A sine A. That's just from basic trigonometry. And by definition, the coordinates of any point on the unit circle are given by cos A sine A, where A is measured anti-clockwise from the positive x-axis. So in this situation, for this point here, A would be an angle between 90 and 180 degrees. That was just a definition. But anyway, let's get back to showing this identity. Well, this is very easy to see from coordinate geometry. If we just get the distance of this point to the origin, we have to get 1. So how do we get the distance? Well, this is just Pythagoras. Or we can use the distance formula in coordinate geometry. Uh, this distance here is sine A. That's the y value of this point. And this distance here is cos A. So here we have this right angle triangle. And it's just a simple application of Pythagoras. Uh, the sum of the squares of the two short sides, that's cos A squared, I could write it like this, plus the square. So the sum of the squares of two short sides equals the longest side squared. Now cos A times cos A is written cos squared A. Sine A times sine A is written sine squared A. And of course one squared is one. And it's not just true for an acute angle, as I've said already, it's true for any angle because the coordinates of points here, anywhere on the unit circle, are defined to be cos A sine A. Now let's prove this double angle identity. We're going to prove that cos of 2A is 2 cos squared A minus 1, or we can say that cos of 2A is 1 minus 2 sine squared A. So to prove this, we used this identity here. It's the compound I angle identity. And how do we use it? Well, how do we get cos 2A from cos A plus B? Well, we just replace B with A. See, an identity is true for any angles A and B. So we can make B equal to anything we like. So in particular, we can make B equal to A. And cos A plus B will become cos A plus A. And of course, that's cos 2A. So that's how we get cos 2A. And we sub A in for B on the right-hand side. So we're going to get cos A times cos A. Well, that's cos squared A. And if we sub A in here, we're going to get sine A times sine A. Well, that's sine squared A. Now, the next thing we do is use this identity up here. So we're going to replace sine squared A with 1 minus cos squared A. So we've just rearranged this identity to make sine squared A the subject of it. And uh, we get 1 minus cos squared A. We plug 1 minus cos squared A in for sine squared A. So we get cos squared A minus bracket 1 minus cos squared A. So we end up with cos squared A minus minus cos squared A. Well, that's cos squared A plus cos squared A. That's 2 cos squared A. And then we have the minus 1. Now, to prove that cos A equals 1 minus 2 sine squared A, we rearrange this a different way. We make cos squared A the subject. So if we make cos squared A the subject, we get cos squared A equals 1 minus sine squared A. So we plug 1 minus sine squared A in for cos squared A here. This is what we'll get. And of course, we just put these together. We have two of them. So we get 1 minus 2 sine squared A. So this trigonometric function involves a double angle. Um, the argument of the cos function is a double angle. It's 2A, and we've written it in terms of a, um, a function of a single angle, in this case sine of 1a. Now here's a double I angle identity for sine of 2a. So you might guess how we're going to arrive at this one. We're going to use the identity sine a plus b equals sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Now you might see this written down a different way. You might it's, see it written down as cos A sine B um, plus sine A cos B, but of course it's the same. It's just wrote differently. 
it's just a different order of these two terms. So A and B can be any angle, so we can replace B with A. And we get sine A plus A, which is, is of course sine 2A. So we replace B with A. So we get sine A times cos A. And over here we get cos A times sine of A. Notice that these two terms are the same. So we can put them together and we have 2 sine A cos A. Next we have that tan 2A equals 2 tan A over 1 minus tan squared A. Now we use the identity proven in a previous video that tan A plus B is tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. And again, you can imagine what you do. You replace B with A. So B becomes A. So that's how we get tan 2A. And uh, over here then we're going to get tan A plus tan A. Well, that's 2 tan A. And underneath we're going to get 1 minus tan A times tan A. Well, tan A times tan A is tan squared A. Cos 2a equals 1 minus tan squared a over 1 plus tan squared a. Now to prove this I will start with the right hand side. Well we know that tan a is sine a over cos a. And we want tan squared a, so we want to square this. So that's sine A times sine A, that's sine squared A over cos A times cos A. So we get sine squared A over cos squared A. And uh, similarly under here, we have 1 plus sine squared A over cos squared A. Now, next thing I will multiply above and below by the denominator. The, the common denominator above and below is cos squared A. Um, so multiply by cos squared A. So we'll have cos squared a times 1 is cos squared a. Cos squared a by sine squared over cos squared a, well, the cos squared a's will cancel, of course. So we'll get uh, minus sine squared a. So that's what we have on top. And underneath, cos squared a by 1 is cos squared a. Cos squared a times this will cancel the cos squared a. Um, now, we proved earlier that cos squared a minus sine squared a is cos 2a. And we also proved that cos squared a plus sine squared a is 1. Sine 2a equals 2 tan a over 1 plus tan squared a. Now I'll start with right hand side here. And I will write tan a as sine a over cos a. And underneath we have 1 plus sine a over cos a times sine a over cos a. Well that's sine squared a over cos squared a. Next, we multiply above and below by cos squared a. So that'll get the top line, well, the top part into a straight line. And uh, same underneath. We choose cos squared a because we want to cancel the cos squared a down here. Okay, um, multiplying on top here, we cancel the cos a underneath. And we will be left with just cos a on top. So we have 2 sine a cos a on top. Now underneath, we have cos squared a by 1, well that's cos squared a. Cos squared a by this here will cancel the cos squared a in the denominator. Now 2 sine a cos a, as we saw earlier, is sine 2a. We proved that earlier. Cos squared a plus sine squared a we proved earlier also, that's 1. 